Hey y'all, country man here. I've been dealing with something in my life that, uh, I, you know, what does God say about prepping and are we supposed to do it? Are we supposed to rely on Him? And been reading my Bible here and I've actually got a computer in front of me and I'm learning how to use it. Uh, I've got a program here that lets you search the Bible and everything. I'd like to read you something out of that, uh, out of the Bible. It's Second Chronicles chapter 11, verse 1. And if I'm taking this out of context, somebody please yell at me. But uh, it's talking about prepping and and uh, preparing and what God has had people do in the past. So let's read a few, few, I think it's 14 verses. Now when Rehoboam came, came to Jerusalem, he assembled from the house of Judea and Benjamin 180,000 chosen men who were warriors to fight against Israel that he might restore the kingdom of Rehoboam. I don't know who that guy is, but he sounds like a pretty bad dude. But when the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judea, and to all of Israel, Judea, and Benjamin, saying, This is the Lord. You shall not go unto and fight against your brethren. Let every man return to his house, for this thing is, for, is from me. Therefore they obeyed their words, and the Lord turned back from the back from attacking Jeroboam. So Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judea. And he built Bethlehem, Edom, Tekoa, Beth, Zer, Sokoho, Adullam, Gath, Marza, Zeth, Adoram, Lachisha, and Azika and uh, Zoram, he bought a bunch of cities and he fortified them. And he fortified this chapter 11, verse 11, Second Chronicles. He fortified the strongholds and he put captains in them and stores of food and oil and wine. In every city he put up shields, spears, and made them very strong, having Judea and Benjamin on his side. For all the territories the priests and Levites, for Levites who were all Israel, took their stand with him. For the Levites left their common land and possessions and came to Judea and Jerusalem for Jeboam and his sons had rejected them from serving the priests of the Lord. He had appointed himself priests. He had appointed himself priests of high places and de for demons and calf idols, which he had made. After the Levites left, those from all tribes of Israel, such as set in heart to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord God and their fathers. So the strength of the kingdom of Judea and made Rehoboam son of Solomon strong for three years because they walked in the ways of David and Solomon for three years. So, in other words, if I'm reading this correctly, God blessed them because there was a war coming and Rehoboam was going to come and conquer them. But they got their food stores, they got their wine, they put up spears, shields, they even made more communities and made everything strong and kept the faith of God in their lives and they actually averted a war? If I'm reading this correctly, and 
when we stand together as everybody's talk about things in our lives that uh, we're survivalists, we're uh, uh, crazy preppers, we are homesteaders. Well, actually I ain't none of that. I'm trying to live a more simple life and put back food for tomorrow. But uh, whatever reason that you are uh, got the mentality that it doesn't hurt to put things back, if you t keep the Lord God on your side and do what we're supposed to do anyway, He'll take care of us. Now, if you sit in your recliner and watch your 40-inch screen TV and uh, don't do anything, uh, He ain't going to help you. I mean, He helps those who help themselves. Uh, I sold my 40 inch screen TV that way I can get up off my butt every once in a while and do what I need to be doing I've uh, everybody knows that I'm on a limited budget so what have I do what have I done uh, what can I do with what I got that's what we've got to figure out uh, do we want a war tomorrow? Do we want a civil war tomorrow? Do we want anything bad to happen? No. I mean, we're not uh, sadists. But, uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if, uh, you know, I'm coming into Northeast Ohio here in the wintertime. It's already the 19th of November and we've had one snow. The ground's been white. I'd say inch, but uh, that's just a prime. Uh, we're going to get multiple inches this winter of snow. Uh, a lot of people will be out on the roads. Do they have uh, snow shovels and salt in their car? Cat litter. Those things, you know, every, you know, every. Well, that's just the essentials. Well, yeah, that is, but it's also preparing for what's coming. It don't matter. Uh, back to me. What have I done this week for uh, this month for preparing? I bought spam. I bought uh, ten cans. I've ate two of them. I got eight left. I love my spam. It's even smoke flavored. I bought. Uh, two big boxes of powdered milk. Am I going to use it? No, nah, I don't even drink milk on a regular basis. I don't buy it in the gallons, but uh, I know for a fact I can make some delicious cheese out of it. That video's coming up. But back to preparing, and on the, I'm trying to keep this on a Bible uh, theme here and what God wants us to do. We don't... Uh, preparing and God helps those who help themselves it's what I'm trying to get at if we return our lives to God and we seek him first and try to do the best we can we can uh, get through just about anything so you know, it doesn't hurt to put things back, prepare, prepping or whatever. I've, uh, I went through, I'm still going through it, a discussion in my head you know, with me, myself, and I on the biblical uh, ethics of, of uh, putting stuff back. And I do it anyway. But uh, I'm trying to figure out what God thinks about it. And this is one of the scriptures that I had that uh, came to mind about, you know, prepping and putting back food and wine. And it even talks about him putting uh, swords and spears back. And they never used them because the war was averted, but they had them. Uh, let's go 3,000 years into the future. What kind of swords and spears do we need to put back now? I'm not saying there's a war coming. I'm not saying anything at all. But, uh, you know, 
for all the people out there, I've heard people say, well, I'm just going to go take it from all those uh, people who have it. Well, all of the food and everything, well, you know, all those people who have food and everything, they also have guns. So, that might not be as easy as what all the uh, hordes of people think it's going to be. And I hope none of this ever comes to pass. And I don't think, uh, we've got a 99% chance that it won't. But if it does, with God's help, uh, I've got a gun, I've got Bible, a Bible, and I've got food. So, with those three things, I'll leave the rest up to God. Uh, countrymen, out for now, I just would want, want everybody's opinion on this. And uh, if anybody's got any more scriptures that kind of help me learn what God has in store for the prepper community or uh, being prepared. I don't like the word self-sufficient because I'm not. Uh, I rely on a whole bunch of people. I got to go to the grocery store to get my food. If I was in a garden and on the farm and raising my own food, I would be a homesteader or more self-sufficient. But right now I'm uh, uh, far from being perfect on uh, things we need. But countrymen out for now, and I would like for everybody to have a blessed day and just uh, prepare for what you got. And uh, one of the things we do have to prepare for is our hearts and souls and, and uh, Christ Jesus. Countrymen out for now, God bless.